Bodybuilders have dominated the world of strength and fitness for decades. People say that bodybuilding training can't actually get you strong. But what if I told you there's a secret rep scheme bodybuilders use that actually can get you the strongest you've ever been? We're gonna break down the secret training method that we use to get our world-class athletes strong as f and that you can also use to hit all-time PRs, and we're gonna start right <laughs> Let's talk real-world strength and conditioning and how this actually works and can be applied. So like any good strength and conditioning coach, a non-white coat, science-based coach, like myself, we like to run lots of experiments. And in this specific case, we used and this is a type of rep scheme that can really lead to actually increasing size and strength. And it's something that you can use to really push some specific plateaus, to get those plateaus shattered. We use this specific rep scheme with our throwers to train their bench press and their back squat. With our weightlifters, we're focusing specifically on their back squat. And what we ended up seeing is someone like David Lucas increase his back squat even while slightly injured with his back and he improved his back squat six rep max by 7.8%. Legend Hayes increased his back squat by 10.8% on that six rep max, and then Taman Johnson improved his back squat six RM in a period of 12 weeks by freaking 20%, 210 to 255 kilos for a set of six. Eric Favors even pushed his rep max up over 270 kilos for multiple reps. Then if we're looking at our weightlifters, Adam McElderry back squatted 170 kilos. Haley Riker back squatted 156 kilos, which is a huge PR for her. And she's been in the world of weightlifting for over a decade. So not only is this a rep scheme that can be used to improve your six RM over a 12 week time frame, it's also something that you can use to boost that one RM. Jump 20 kilos and feel good and I mean, not good, but I was able to finish it. Uh, I feel accomplished and I feel stronger. So the results speak for themselves. But what even is this rep scheme? This philosopher's stone of strength is known as myo reps. So Olympic caliber athletes saw results in as fast as four weeks. And one of the interesting parts here is that I first read and heard about myo reps from the bodybuilding world. I believe it was like the mid 2000s in reading about Borge Fagerli, who essentially created myo reps or came up with that term myo reps. Now, myo reps are a very unique way to stress the metabolic pathways of specific muscle groups. And some of the interesting factors here is that you can use this method for smaller muscles that struggle to grow. Let's say your biceps or even calves, something along these lines. Muscles that struggle to become much more hypertrophic. They need a lot of volume. And one of the big issues that I saw and read about was that if you use compound movements with myo reps, it can tax the nervous system a bit too much and it might not be effective. But I think there's a couple different ways that you can go about altering those myo reps to try to improve the adaptation that you're looking for from those compound movement patterns. It basically acts as endurance training for strength athletes. Uh, I took several steps closer to death. My legs feel atrocious. It feels like I just went through like a wood chipping machine and everything's just gone. The idea here with myo reps is to gain a massive amount of mass, get that sustained mass, but also you're gonna increase that mental fortitude. That's something that we talk about. The realm of sports performance oftentimes is missing that the bodybuilding world does so well. And then finally, you're going to gain a large amount of strength. Now you can use myo reps with absolute strength movements for your legs and even for your upper body. Now, to implement the myo reps, the first thing you have to do is actually warm up. Okay, so the big thing that we're gonna do now is that we are going to select a weight that we can do for about eight to 10 reps. Now, if I was doing this for an isolation movement like my biceps, that might be 15 to 20 reps. Here's another kicker. If I have someone who is a twitchier athlete, a more explosive athlete, someone like Sam Mattis, we chose a weight that he would do for about eight to 10 reps and we did it for eight 
reps. So with these compound choices, especially the bench press and with the squat, we'll pick a weight that you can do for about, let's just say eight to 12 reps. You should have about two reps left in the tank. So you'll have two reps left in the tank after you hit a set of eight to 10 reps. So it would look like this. We have that weight selected. I'm gonna get on, and I'm gonna hit 10 reps or eight reps. Hopefully I can actually get 10. Ready, Andrew? One, two, three. So I hit 10 reps. I might have had one or two left in the tank. What I want to do now is I want to gather myself, make sure I'm okay, get focused mentally. This is gonna be about 30 to 40 seconds, especially with a back squat. Okay, I'm gonna rest. I really wanna focus in, dial in. I'm gonna go back at the exact same weight now. I'm gonna hit a double. Andrew, one, two, three. Now, I wanna rest again. Let's say I'm gonna go about 30, 40 seconds. That felt decent. We're hitting that set of eight to 10 reps, okay, on the compound movement. We're gonna then rest 30 to 40 seconds. We're gonna hit eight doubles. And remember, these eight doubles play into how we're gonna increase a massive amount of strength and get a large amount of volume. Ready, Andrew? Ooh. One, two, three. <sighs> and if you notice right there, okay, I'm starting to feel pretty good now. The first double, sometimes the second double, you're not feeling as good mentally. But what's interesting is that around like the fourth, fifth, sixth, you start to feel like a freaking freight train. Your nervous system starts to wake up. You still feel really, really strong then. Then the last two will be a challenge. But you go through this for eight sets. Now, one big kicker that I wanna add in here is that something like the back squat, I think this works better for women than for men. I think women handle the fatigue a little bit better. They're stronger mentally, especially under fatigue and they're not as fast twitch. It was a lot harder than I was expecting. Right around my fourth double at 30 seconds, my back started to get tight, and I was like, well, we just have to stand up because I don't know how to fail. So just figured out that that was the only thing that we could do. For men though, because we tend to be babies when we're doing something like this, let's go, Andrew. One, two, three. We tend to be babies when we're doing something like this. So if you're a little worried at first, pick that eight rep max. But at the end of it, okay, as we work through in the next weeks, we would do like a traditional cluster set and another traditional cluster set. And then we come back into these mile reps. Then we adapt to it a little bit better mentally. And that leads to those big time strength gains. This is really, really good, especially for sports like combat sports, like wrestling. I would do this like, let's say six weeks out from the season. Strength sports, I would do this like 10 to 12 weeks out from the season because they're more strength focused or more power impulse focused. Pick a weight that you can do for 10 to 12 reps. Go in, you're gonna do that first point, eight to 10 reps. So you wanna try and have two reps left in the tank. Then you're gonna rest anywhere from 30 to 45 seconds and that's gonna start the clusters, okay? So that's where we're gonna go into eight doubles. We hit those eight doubles. After we hit that set of 10, that is that myo rep to help you blow up your bench or your squat. 20%, don't forget, Tamon Johnson. One, two, three. This is a pretty good workout for a YouTube filming. I think if you look back on the video, my last six reps, I'm crying. I'm actually shedding tears during those six reps. But uh, if, I were to, if you asked me four weeks ago if I would be able to push that kind of top end weight, uh, you know, even just last week being able to hit, you know, 240 plus, 245 for singles. Didn't, I would have never thought that. Now, when we're training myo reps with compound movements that can be neurologically fatiguing, back squats, bench presses, deadlifts, you don't want to do them in back-to-back -back weeks. I like to do them, let's say, in week one, and then we might have two weeks of another type of rest pause method, and then follow it up with week four being the week that we would then do those myo reps again. So those non myo rep weeks would traditionally become those traditional cluster sets or something like the Mattis cluster set that you can use to really push strength gains that are gonna be on another level. 
And one of the big aspects around myo reps is that we like to use them typically in the early phases of periodization. So if we're trying to get a large amount of volume done, let's say exposure phase, comprehension phase, that's where we're gonna bring in those myo reps. And we've even done them now over the span of two specific phases. And if we're looking at the overarching sports specific periodization, something that you can see very easily inside of peak strength, these are always likely going to exist during the comprehension phase. And I wanna give you guys access to this same exact programming that got Taman to hit that 20% increase on that 6RM, that got Haley, David Lucas, Eric Favors, Adam McIlderry to squat loads and loads of weight. And you guys can start a strength program for your specific sport today by heading to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store. Myo reps work absolute wonders during the comprehension phase because they create a fantastic link between strength work and volume work. And that's one of the big aspects that we're looking for here when we're actually implementing myo reps. As athletes and general fitness enthusiasts, we've got to recognize that myo reps are extremely challenging. They're very hard mentally. And if we're doing them for just say biceps, like we're doing bicep curls, we're hammering out a set of 15 and then we're doing drop sets after that where we're wrestling for 20 to 30 seconds and then doing sets of six or eight until we can't move our arms anymore. And it's also going to be a little bit easier mentally, but the compound movements with myo reps is where that large challenge really comes into play. And another factor is that if we're in the realm of sports performance, we shouldn't be planning myo reps the day before an extraordinarily important sports specific practice. We don't want to do myo reps the day before we're going into a major competition because you're going to be shot both physically and mentally. So this is what you can do right now. You can hit myo reps for let's say two to two and a half weeks. Then you can back off for a week and a half to two weeks. And then you can come back in and hit that myo rep scheme again and see, did you increase from the first couple times that you did it? And then how well did you handle that adaptation mentally and physically? When we get to the actual time for competition, all this work we've put in, especially in programs like this, it's able to translate now to higher stamina, higher strength levels in competition season when we're out in Oregon. And then ultimately stay away from them for about two to three months following that actual first experiment. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.